exclusively for fatigue wear. It was very comfortable and designed to fit loosely. It was a uniquely American military coat, practical and free from the foreign military influence that can be traced in most of the other styles we've seen. The sack coat was made from flannel and represents one of the first uses of flannel for military coats. Flannel is a soft woolen cloth with a loose texture. It was used for sack coats, shirts, and undergarments. Military use of flannel is new at this time. The fatigue blouse was very practical. Fatigue blouses are not form-fitting garments. They had no padding and plenty of room for arm movement, ideally suited for fatigue and campaign purposes. Government contracts called for indigo-dyed blue wool flannel weighing five and a half ounces per yard for sack coats. The sack-style coat had become popular with American civilians for business wear in the early 1850s. General Order No. 3 of March 24, 1858, introduced the sack coat for military use. This date marks a dividing line. Soldiers would be issued different garments for fatigue duty and dress duty from 1858 onwards. The 1861 regulations describe the fatigue blouse or sack coat. Quote, for fatigue purposes, a sack coat of dark blue flannel extending halfway down the thigh and made loose without sleeve or body lining, falling collar, inside pocket on the left side, four coat buttons down the front. For recruits, the sack coat will be made with sleeve and body lining, the latter of flannel. Although the regulations state that the fatigue blouse was to be made without lining for the sleeve or body except for recruits, there were more lined coats produced than unlined coats. Comparing the major depots of New York, Philadelphia, and Cincinnati, 3,685,755 lined coats were purchased, and 1,809,207 unlined coats were purchased during the years 1861 through 1865. These were purchased already made up. The sack coat was used widely during the war. One soldier commented, many regiments never saw a dress coat after leaving the state. Sack coats are very scarce today. In 1864, 2,099,684 fatigue blouses were supplied. To get an idea of the inflationary years of 1861 to 1865, unlined sack coats started out at a low price of $1.87 and climbed to $4.37. For lined coats, the low and high prices were $2.10 and $5.09, respectively. This fatigue blouse is stamped SA for the school kill arsenal. Note that the collar edge is not rounded. It is hand-stitched throughout. It has a seam down the middle of the back and is lined. The length of the back is 31 inches. The sleeve length is 33 inches and the collar length is 9 inches. The skirt width is 24 inches. The width of the breast is 40 inches. It is 6 inches wide at the wrist, 8 inches wide at the elbow, 8 inches wide at the armpit, and the collar width is 2 and a half inches. This fatigue blouse bears the stamp of J.T. Martin, one of the largest clothing suppliers during the Civil War. Contract specifications dated October 18, 1864. Name the government agent as Colonel W. W. McKim. The depot is Cincinnati. Bond was required in the amount of $280,000 for a quantity of 250,000 lined flannel sack coats at a cost of $4.55 each. The delivery date for the coats is March 3, 1865 from the QMGO, Register of Contracts, number 16, 1864 to 1867. This specimen bears the U.S. inspector's stamp of George C. Fry. Fry was a clothing inspector at Cincinnati from February 10, 1865 until August 15, 1865. This coat has no back seam and a rounded cuff with much less length on the slit. The collar is rounded. It is machine stitched throughout. The length of the back is 30 inches. The sleeve length is 32 inches and the collar length is nine inches. Collar width is two and a half inches. The width at the wrist is five inches, and the width at the elbow is seven inches. 